speaker who made all his way from Indonesia, Professor Andy. Uh, he's from Frida University, and he will speak about anxiety and medical disorders. Thank you, Tatiana. Uh, I think good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to come to this lovely meeting. Uh, this is my second WhatsApp after Wurzburg in 2019, October. And at that time, I presented a poster. Now, I'm very honored to become a presenter in this symposium. And today, uh, as a part of the Anxiety and Medical Disorder Symposium, I would like to uh, thank you also to my colleagues, Dr. Elitania and my student, Dr. Ingrid, who has become a supporter for this uh, presentation, the relationship of anxiety levels with sleep quality of diabetes mellitus patient. I come from Indonesia, Jakarta, uh, from Department of Psychiatry, Faculty of Medicine, uh, and Health Science, Krida Wacana Christian University in Indonesia. So this is the highlight of this presentation. So as we know that uh, the problem with anxiety uh, sometimes uh, came together with all the medical problems. Uh, we know that uh, some of the medical problems like cardiovascular disease, uh, the gastrointestinal disease, and the diabetes, thyroid, and respiratory disease sometimes come together as a comorbid to the level of anxiety of the problem. So many uh, studies and also as a clinician, uh, I am uh, in a private clinic in the hospital, in the private hospital, uh, very often seeing uh, patients with anxiety problems and also has some medical problems. And today we are going to talk more and stress in a diabetes patients. So this is the diabetes facts uh, around in uh, globally uh, estimated uh, around 30, 346 million people have diabetes. In the region of Southeast Asia, as, a, as a, my region in Indonesia, also nearly 71 million were estimated to be living with diabetes in 2010. And an equal number had impaired glucose tolerance. So it will be more likely have a challenge in their health in the future. In Indonesia, the number of people with diabetes continues to increase from 10.7 million in 2019 to 19.5 million in 2021. So Indonesia now has the fifth highest number of people with diabetes in the world up from seven in 2019. So it will be a big challenge for us also and considering that this uh, related to the stress problem and sleep problems, we know that the, from the recent survey in Indonesia about mental health problems, uh, many uh, respondents said that there are two kind of things they like to mention as a stress problem in their life. The problem is sleeping and also the burnout out problem related to the works. So when we see the anxiety, sleep, and diabetes, we know that many studies have been uh, done before about how that both sleep problems and anxiety are highly prevalent in individuals uh, with diabetes mellitus. And they show that uh, significantly higher the problems of sleeping and anxiety uh, compared to the general population in diabetic patients. And also the poorly controlled glute uh, blood glucose levels in uh, diabetes can lead to increased cortisol level, we, which I know that in this uh, also this uh, problem related to depressions that are associated with the higher of cortisol in the blood. And the poor sleep quality and anxiety can negatively impact uh, glycemic control in individuals with diabetes and also can uh, relate to sleep deprivations and also it can be uh, uh, trigger the anxiety itself. So the problem with insulin resistance and impaired glucose metabolism that we mentioned before has some uh, also effect from this uh, kind of thing like sleeping and the poor quality of sleep. Uh, as we know that we know that uh, the psychological well-being was affected because of the chronic of the disease itself. Uh, diabetes can lead uh, to psychological distress, uh, which includes anxiety and depression. And in turn, it can be 
disrupt uh, sleep pattern and quality. So recognizing and addressing uh, sleep problems and anxiety in diabetes patient is uh, crucial. So the integrated care will be beneficial to maintain the, the quality of life of the patients. So this uh, study conducted to, uh, by my students and I with my colleagues, uh, the research design is very simple, the descriptive correlations. Uh, the aim of this study is to find uh, the relationship between anxiety levels and sleep quality in patients with diabetes mellitus. Uh, the study was conducted uh, at a one health, health center, uh, community health center in Jakarta. Uh, to assess the anxiety level, we used the Zoom self rating anxiety scale and the respondent sleep quality was assessed during uh, using the Pittsburgh uh, sleep quality index. The research subject were patients uh, with diabetes mellitus type 2 the sample uh, size is 97 uh, respondents. So this is a simple uh, characteristic of the patients. Most of the patients is uh, 41 to 65 years old. Uh, a lot of more the women than uh, men, uh, but it is uh, I think it's quite comparing uh, the same amount of uh, uh, respondents. So the durations of diabetes. Most of the patients has one to five years durations of diabetes so it's quite a chronic uh, and there is one uh, eight patients that has uh, 10 years of uh, having diabetes uh, mellitus itself so when we see uh, the result from the zoom self rating anxiety scales uh, more than uh, 80 percent of the patients uh, has low to moderate uh, anxiety level, uh, which is uh, moderate to 41% and severe is 50%. Uh, and about the sleep quality of diabetic patients, uh, screening with Pittsburgh uh, Sleep Quality Index, there are about 36.1% uh, of respondents that complaining about the sleep quality and also the screen by the Pittsburgh Sleep Quality Index as a bad uh, sleep quality of diabetic patients. So the result of study, uh, we want to know the relationship even in the statistical uh, point of view because the data distribution was not normal and the two variable study were ordinal scale. So the spin one correlation value, the uh, R is 0 0.564 and the P uh, value is uh, 0 in patient with diabetes. So statistically, there is a significant correlation uh, between anxiety levels and, and sleep quality of patients with diabetes mellitus at the Grogal Patamburan Health Center. Uh, the directions of uh, the correlation is positive, which means that the relation between the two variable is un unidirectional. So the greater the ZUNGSA score, the greater the PSQ1 score. So it means that Maybe uh, when we talk about in clinical problems, when we see a patient with anxiety, so maybe they have a greater problems with uh, the sleep itself. And we know that uh, many patients of anxiety disorder complain about uh, the problem with sleeping. So this is the conclusion and suggestions. It's very quick uh, presentation. Uh, there is a significant correlation uh, between anxiety levels and the quality of sleep of patients with diabetes mellitus in Grogo Patamburan Health Center. The higher of the level of anxiety will result in the worst of the quality of one's sleep. So the suggestion given based on the result of this study and we have, have conducted uh, educational needed uh, to the survey of the diabetes mellitus patients in our uh, community and by re regulating sleep patterns as well as doing exercise and also uh, taking regular medications so that blood sugar is uh, controlled. So these are my steps and this is my uh, Dr. Elitania here, uh, one of my co-authors for this presentation. And I welcome you to Indonesia, especially <laughs> Bali. As you see that many people know Bali but if we say that Indonesia, they oh Bali in Indonesia or Indonesia in Bali. Uh, Actually, Bali is in Indonesia. Yeah. Thank you very much for your. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for giving this insightful presentation. I, I can, I can
Uh, yeah, the, the problem is uh, when we see a lot of uh, presentations or uh, studies before that correlates between these two factors, you know, stress, anxiety, and also the diabetes, some of them are related to the chronicity of the uh, problems of the diabetes. So they become stressed because they have diabetes, you know, diabetes uh, become more uh, you know, kind of like a, a death sentence for them. But in the other uh, studies, they said that this because of the cortisol level that increasing and also many of the metabolic uh, problems, the endocrine uh, disease related to the anxiety itself. So the clear uh, mechanism is still unknown. Uh, there's kind of like a theory of cortisol level of the patients with diabetes. We know that uh, many depression Patients also has diabetes because of the problem they have uh, in the, you know, kind of like a, a regular exercise, they, their lack of regular exercise, uh, quite a lot of eating. But the hypothesis for this uh, presentation or for these uh, studies is that anxiety levels of the patients with diabetes can disrupt the, the sleep problems. So it's, it's, and also uh, in uh, vice versa like that. So I think there is kind of like a many uh, opportunity to, to have more studies uh, related to the, how can we fix the re relationship between those two uh, objects or those two subjects of this uh, medica mechanism. Thank you. Thank you, I think we have time for one more question. Maybe. Yes, Tatia. Mm. I've never been, i never uh, used that kind of uh, procedures uh, because I know that uh, in my residency training, uh, I see a patient with depression and diabetes. And from this study in 2008, uh, it was said that uh, depression patients, uh, when we consider the diabetes patients as uh, have a depression, they also the link of the HbA1c. So there will be a glyco, uh, glycoid, uh, hemoglobin uh, glycocorticoid that are upraising uh, with the patient with the depression. So maybe we have to consider that uh, depression, we have to be very careful about that because when patients uh, have a diabetes and depression, so the you know the level of uh, blood glucose will be uprising uh, without any particular. Even they have some kind of like a di diet decision or using medications to use that. That's that. That. Thank you very much. Okay, we would have time for a short question. No, so 